your money's worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Kate Adamick. I want to be sure I said it right, Kate. <laughs> Co-founder of Cook for America. Hi, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for uh, Cook for America, that's a big title. Does that mean you guys cook for, for whatever? How many, our population is growing for 700 million or something? Yeah, it is. It's actually we're cooking for the school children of America. And the title came from Teach for America when oh. I was in President Clinton's Harlem offices five years ago, as a matter of fact. Oh, okay. Well, so. that's a good idea. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been uh, working in education before my work for the uh, first for Secretary of Education, Rod Page. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, cook for America and cooking, ha cook healthy food for schools is a good topic. So, all right, let's so let's go slow. Um, you got you got what what had what made you get into this topic? I, I was changing careers. I started as an attorney. I became a professional chef. I was moving to New York about eight years ago, and my friend said to me, "What are you going to do when you grow up this time?" <laughs> good uh, point. And, and at the mo at the very moment my first friend asked me that question, I was reading an article in the New York Times about childhood obesity, and I said to Which her, "Which is pretty high now, right?" It, it's outrageously high. Uh, it's yeah, what about is it? A, a, third? a third of the children yeah. in, in the country. That's correct. About two thirds of the adults are either overweight or obese. It's a, it's, it's, it's a bit of an oxymoron because the truth of the matter is there's a big fixation about fitness and nutrition, but yet people yeah. are getting fatter. Yes, there is. And, and I think the part of the problem is that the focus is on nutrition and not on food. Uh, we have industry, big business, telling us that, oh, this is lower in sodium, this is lower in calories, this is lower in fat. But and you can look up. On the on the board of most fast food places, and see how many calories. And that's right. You can, but the bottom line is that when you're eating all of this highly pro these highly processed products that our grandparents would not recognize as food, certainly not our great grandparents, yeah. that there are consequences. I did a uh, I did a uh, a ten ten wins. I used to do a little spot on ten ten wins, and I did something like don't eat anything your grandmother wouldn't recognize that's, as food. That is the best advice there is. I think we spend a lot of time teaching children how to read labels and my advice to parents and teachers is don't teach them how to read labels tell them if that has a label don't put it in your mouth oh that's a good mm. point all right so you you made your decision your third or fourth career decision yes. and you focused on teaching people helping them learn i suppose how to become how to, how to serve better meals what we do specifically is we teach the food service workers in schools how to cook. And I like the fact you call them lunch teachers, and that's exactly. pretty good. I, I'm expecting them to raise their profile of themselves. Absolutely. Uh, they are the solution. We consider school food the solution. Okay, so walk us through it. Um, what's, how, how do you go about this? You don't just walk in and say, I'm going to teach you how to, to serve healthier food. You have a process, obviously. Do you have something you call a boot camp? Yes. The ideal process begins with an assessment. And I should say that this work is funded by foundations around the country. I was going to ask you. Uh, you right. Yes. Okay. So it's you're privately funded. Yes. The federal government doesn't help you at all? Uh, the federal government actually awarded the state of Colorado a $400,000 stimulus yeah. grant through the Because, according control. to the newspaper article, we got your name, Colorado yes. has, it has, it is an outstanding state as far as serving nutritious meals. They were, they are now, that's correct. They've always been one of the healthiest states in the okay, nation. Okay, so you, you do an assessment and mm -hmm. you find out that it's pretty bad. That, that yes. orange gooey macaroni and cheese yes. is pretty yes. is, is pretty fattening and pretty gooey, but the kids like it. And the hot turkey sandwich uh -huh. on bread with that dark gravy, the kids like it. And they want their Oreo cookies and their Malamars and all that stuff as their dessert. And and you find that out and now what? Two biggest myths about school food reform. The first is that there's not enough money, and the second is that the kids won't eat it. Okay. We'll start with the second one since that's, that's okay. what you brought up. Okay, fine. The yeah. kids absolutely eat real food. When the lunch teachers, and, and we call them lunch teachers in recognition of the fact that children do not stop learning when they're in the cafeteria. Of course. When the maybe, lunch they, maybe that's where they learn the best. That's absolutely. It, it's certainly when there's a tremendous opportunity. There's a lot less stress in there. Um, but when the lunch teachers are cooking, food from scratch using whole fresh foods, it smells good. It smells like a grandmother's kitchen on Thanksgiving. And the kids appreciate that. Uh, the adults appreciate that. The kids absolutely eat even, real food. Even in, I want to ask you, even in blighted urban neighborhoods absolutely. where you have kids that may, not, may, may never have smelled grandma's kitchen? Absolutely. 
Uh, I, every, every school, every group of children will have a fussy eater. My own brother ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for 20 years. He you know, occasionally sat in the park and ate dirt and dog bones one year just, I think, to irritate my mother. Uh, he grew up, he's a marathon runner now. There will always be kids who are fussy eaters. That but the are. mass, the majority right. of the well, children. Right, well that's what we're talking about, the majority. Absolutely. Okay. The food, it's delicious, it smells good, it looks good, it tastes good, they like it. Okay. So that's the first myth. So, so given good home cooked food, mm -hmm. lunch teacher cooked food, yes. kids will eat it. You're, Absolutely. You, 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 that, that has been, a, that's been proved to you? I see it all the time. I travel the country. It's, it, in fact, it's unusual for me to even be home in New York as I am today. I'm in schools around the country all of the time. And when the food is switched from the highly processed food to scratch cooked food, the kids love it. I have a, a hundred stories a story of a little boy walking through the front of the line on a day where they decided to put broccoli on the pizza and even I thought oh no this is not going to go over first little boy through the line about eight years old looks at it and he says broccoli pizza and I said uh, yeah and he said that's great you can't get this in a lot of places you know, the, okay. they actually love it another little boy telling me just two weeks ago about how excited he was to have chicken with bones I love chicken with bones uh, so I probably get pretty, I'm so sick of those chicken fingers I used to say, oh Absolutely. my God, if I see another chicken finger, I'm going to throw up. That's right. But well, we think kids don't like real food because industry that makes a lot of money selling us processed products to give our children, to feed our children. Okay, so Want us we'll, to we'll, we'll accept it. We'll accept this as a given. You've been around, you've traveled, and you say kids, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not against accepting that because I have found myself that uh, in, within our family that it, it is so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, home cooked food, people actually cooking, buying, uh, purchasing agent, uh, someone refrigerating it, blah, 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 pots and pans. That's less money than buying something, than buying some hamburger patties ready made. It is. I know that that sounds counterintuitive, but, but it is the reality. And some of the reasons it's the reality in a school food environment is because of the way the federal subsidies work. So the federal government provides funding for schools in two ways. The first is cash. Depending on the income level of the children's family, right. they're either eligible for a free meal, a reduced price meal, or they pay for their, their lunches. And the federal government pays the school district a certain dollar amount. And in New York City, every, we have a, a breakfast program too. And also for breakfast, okay? So let's start with breakfast. Breakfast is well, very well funded uh, compared to lunch. So one way that school districts can capture a tremendous amount of money is by serving breakfast in the classroom to every child who comes to school that day. If a school district has at least 40% of their kids well, eligible every, for every, free every or reduced, kid can get it. yes, the, the money, the economics of that situation works out to the school's advantage. Oh, okay. So uh, what's hundreds the of thousands of dollars. In New York, I think it's about somewhere between 20 and 40 to 50 million dollars a year yeah, that we're I not capturing in the city. So what's a good breakfast that you can serve in the classroom? Uh, something simple, right? Something simple. It could be a whole grain, it could be a muffin. It could be a whole grain um, muffin. It could be an apple and a carton of milk. Right. right. There's nothing wrong with that breakfast. It's good. A banana and some cereal and a carton of milk. It's okay. That's a good mm -hmm. breakfast. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and instead of a donut. Absolutely. Or, Instead of a donut and a or, carton of chocolate I mean, on the milk, subway, or? I see kids early in the morning eating french fries. Yes, we do. Uh, and it's pathetic. It's pathetic, and our country spends $3 trillion a and year on And those french fries from McDonald's, I mean, it costs more than a decent breakfast would cost. Yes. Also, it drives me crazy, Kate, I have to interrupt this. I feel so bad for these kids that they don't, they're not even sent off to school with something from their parent at home. What can you expect, how can you expect these kids to learn if they're eating a donut or a bag of uh, potato chips on their way to school? It drives me nuts. We can't, and we see that in test scores. We see that in behavioral issues. We see it all the time among our kids. Uh, one of the things I find most frustrating when I talk to school administrators about breakfast in the classroom is when they say, we don't have time to do it every morning, we can't, you know, we can't make time in our day for that, but they do want them fed in the classroom on test day. And I think to myself, there's no logic behind that. You want to make sure they're fed on the day that you're testing them on we'll something sure that, that they didn't learn. Learning. That's yeah. right, all year because you yeah, didn't feed them. Okay, that. so um, it's less expensive or it's, 
It's, is, is, it, is it a it's cost a, saving? It's a revenue generator. Breakfast in the classroom is a revenue okay. generator. So therefore, more money, the poorer the district, the more money there okay. is. So therefore, there's some excess that can be pushed off into the lunch program. Absolutely. Okay. And this, now we go to how, how can you do a home-cooked lunch meal um, economically? Enough economically to affect your budget. The second way that the federal government funds school food is through the commodity food program. We used to call it when we were young the government surplus food. It's now called the commodity food service, All right. uh, commodity food program. And that means that the school districts get an allotment for free food that comes through the what government channels. What kind of channels. free food? There's, there's the trick right there. They can actually order with their government allotment through the commodities program raw chicken, eight piece cut up, uh, raw ground beef, raw ground turkey, raw ground pork, beautiful bone rolled and tied pork roast. Oh wow! Uh, sometimes a turkey breast. Oh. And they can order that, and it's raw. free. Raw, and they don't have it's to pay. It's frozen, for it. but it's but it's not cooked. Okay. They don't pay for it. They pay about eight cents a pound shipping and handling. And they can and they can cook this. For, and they can however, cook. But what they don't what what they're being told to do, encouraged to do, is to process their raw meat products into chicken, the chicken fingers you were talking about, pork dippers, beef dunkers, all kinds of things that nobody recognizes from, from our generation as real food. Uh, and when they process their free commodities products, they pay for it. We think they pay 300 to 400 million dollars a year. As opposed to bringing the raw chicken exactly. pieces or the and raw ground turkey into their own kitchens and cooking it. Exactly. Do, do the schools have kitchens to cook? It depends where you are, but most kitchens have some cooking equipment, and so the key is how do we train the people who are there to cook with the equipment they have. As a professional chef, you can give me a stove and I can cook at that, or you could give me an oven and I can cook at yeah, that, you or you could give me a kettle and I can cook at exactly. that. Exactly, you can make ch turkey chili. Exactly. So the key is how do we train our food service workers, our lunch teachers, how to cook from scratch. Well, I guess that's what you're doing. Way. That is what we're doing. Yes. It's an education process, I guess, just like what we're working, like Teacher America, for America works to train teachers to be better teachers. Yes. But you're right. on the, I think but however, I, you know what, you're almost the first link. That nutrition piece has got to be somewhat in place for the learning to happen. I don't think kids learn yes. well on an empty, neglected stomach. I agree. Do you? I do not. I know that they don't. And I also know that there's no sense in investing in teaching children how to be rocket scientists if they're so sick by the time they're 40 years old that we've now reduced well, their they life have expectancy. Some kind of a, they have some kind of fat yeah. disease like yeah. diabetes That's or, right. or That's right. whatever. That's right. Centers for Disease Control so, says they, anyway, And the other thing is, anyway, if we could ever get the uh, government budget that looked at things in a common sense manner, we would say to ourselves, we could give people a little bit more money for to make good lunches in, in the schools, and we can save on all the health costs associated yes. with obesity. Well, the beautiful thing is, they don't need to give them more money. They're actually at, the, at, money as well as they exactly. right. the money is there. Exactly, the money is there. We've run out of time. It's a fascinating topic. Thank good you. luck to you. Thank you so much. I really much. think what you're doing is terrific. Thank you, Judith. I'm Judith West. You're watching Getting Your Money's Worth. We've just interviewed Kate Adamic and Cook for America. Sounds very good to me. I can already smell the home cooking. Thanks for watching. I'm <laughs> sorry.